Hey everybody, it's Jason with Parallel Reality coming back with you today with an article from January 13th. That's just yesterday from the time I'm recording this. And it is from Red State and it is entitled Violent Hamas Protesters in DC Escalate. Some White House staffers relocated for their safety. Right off the bat, this headline reminds me of the May 29th insurrection, uh, May 29th of 2020, I believe it was, insurrection at the White House during the Summer of Love, where this exact same thing happens. But some of you out there are probably going, what the hell was that insurrection? I don't remember that. Well, I'd say go look it up because the same thing happened with the same, basically, basically the same people back then. And just like that instance, though, I'm pretty sure that this is going to get shoveled under the rug and the media is just not going to report on it, or at least not accurately. So let's go through this here. It says, earlier Saturday evening, that's Saturday the 13th, it says, uh, Red State's Nick Arama, who's another one of the writers here, of course, said, reported on the violent protests outside the White House as the pro-Hamas anti-Israel crowd conducted a march on Washington for Gaza. Nothing like sticking up for, you know, the... Uh, the villains in the story and defending their uh, killing of babies, raping of women, and just utter uh, debauchery and massacring all around. Good job, guys. As they climbed statues and waved Palestinian flags along with ISIS ones, so again, good people, and set off smoke bombs and spread dead baby dolls outside the White House fence. Once again, these are the best people we have. And yes, that's sarcasm for those of you that can't tell. It says now it turns out the protests were so serious that a number of White House staffers had to be relocated for their own safety. I don't know whether President Biden or the Department of Justice will call this an insurrection, but when the people's homes, often considered the symbol of the most powerful country in the world, is under attack, things are clearly getting out of hand. And just like what I mentioned earlier about the uh, the May 29th insurrection, uh, it's all the same. Again, it's all the same people doing it, but those aren't the people that are uh, getting put on lists and getting sent to jail for nearly no reason, you know, um, you know, but yeah, let's just, let's keep going after the other people that just happen to be like sniffing around the Capitol on January 6th. Let's not go after the people that are actually trying to bust into the white house. Okay. It says the fences surrounding the white house suddenly looked extremely flimsy as the mob shook them and tried to push them down, which they almost succeeded in doing. And here's a, an Andy no embedded tweet, which you can certainly watch on your own. And it's kind of scary. It says they even shouted their support for Yemen, despite the fact that Houthi terrorists in that country have been attacking ships and the crucial red sea shipping lanes, potentially causing supply chain nightmares worldwide. Again, they're cheering only, you know, these are the best people cheering for the best people. Can't you tell? So the demonstrators were heard chanting ceasefire now, which is, means the end of Israel, and free, free Palestine. Well, you should talk to Hamas about that. With many waving Palestinian flags, Yemen, Yemen, make us proud, proud, turn another ship around. You got to love their rhymes that they come up with. They probably think they're so clever. It says, so that was also recited at the demonstration hours after strikes were launched against the Houthis in Yemen. The U.S. Secret Service told Fox News Digital that some fences were damaged outside the White House and that staff members and journalists were relocated as a result. And the White House also said on Saturday that President Biden is currently at Camp David. Okay, so the president was not there. So I guess the media then, even if Biden did have to get relocated, they wouldn't have to make, I guess they wouldn't make fun of Joe for being relocated, again, if he was there. Because they did deal with Trump. You know, Trump had to be, they rushed him away for safety to like a bunker, and the media was like making fun of him for it. But now if Joe was there, would they do the same thing? I'm highly doubting that would actually be a thing that happens. So here's a libs of TikTok embedded tweet as well. Uh, See, so it says insurrection taking place. Will anyone be arrested? Probably not. Uh, or thrown into prison. Yeah, again, probably not. So the fences run with constant assault and some were damaged. During the demonstration near the White House complex on January 13th, a portion of the anti-scale fencing that was erected for, this, for the event sustained temporary damage, the Secret Service statement read. The issues were promptly repaired on site by U.S. Secret Service or teams. All right, so that's good. So as a precaution, some members of the media and staff in proximity to Pennsylvania Avenue were temporarily, temporarily relocated while the issue was being addressed. The statement continued. The Secret Service made no arrests associated with the march, and there was no property damage to the White House or adjacent buildings. So this right here, they made no arrests. Why not? The D.C. Metropolitan Police Chief Pamela A. Smith released a statement condemning the violence. Because, yes, as always, a, a strongly worded statement is... Definitely going to make those people go, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't do this anymore. That, that should absolutely do it. Okay. So good job there, police chief. It says the right to peacefully protest is one of the cornerstones of our democracy. And the Metropolitan Police Department has long supported those who visit our city to demonstrate safely. Smith's statement read, however, violence, destructive behavior, and criminal activities are not tolerated. So what are you going to do about it, chief? 
And she added, says, while well, majority of today's demonstration remained peaceful, there were instances of illegal and destructive behavior in Lafayette Park, including items being thrown at our officers. We are supporting our partners at the United States Park Police as they investigate and hold those found responsible accountable for their actions. Again, I doubt that's going to happen. And if you were to read this first part here, how is that any different from January 6th? It isn't. Okay, so we're about to see a two-tiered system of justice again. And the author here says, I am not holding my breath, waiting for anyone in these violent mobs to be held accountable for their actions. Yeah, me neither. So we saw with the George Floyd riots that if you were on the correct side of the aisle, that would be if you had a, a you know, if you held left-wing views, you could cause billions of dollars in damage and get away with it. But if you ambled anywhere near the Capitol on January 6, 2021, you would be hunted down to the ends of the earth. Yep. And that's what they're starting to do now. The D.C. Uh, attorney, the district attorney, has come out and said that he's starting He's going to start going after people who are just simply walking around on the grass near the Capitol, even if they had nothing to do with it. So you tell me that this isn't a political uh, persecution. So there's been a seemingly endless number of these anti-Israel protests, and very few people have been held accountable. They're getting more violent as well, and it's only a matter of time before serious tragedies occur. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't want that to happen, but it's, I think it's almost inevitable at this point. Since until the powers of people to stop to this, they will simply continue. God forbid that the White House fence should actually get toppled next time. Who knows what would happen then? I think we know, and I think those people would be totally fine with that. And folks uh, on the left, you know, especially the people in power, what are you going to do then? You're going to cheer it on? Because if you do, you're one of them. Okay, you're, you might as well be lumped in with one of them. If you're, you need to come out and condemn it. Otherwise, you're part of the problem and you need to be removed from your position. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? Do you uh, do you think anything's going to happen to these folks? Is, again, like I've said multiple times already in this video, I certainly don't. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon.